Bucks, go Bucks. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Go Bucks, go Bucks. First and goal, gotta tough it out. Get in the end zone and call a hack route. Go line a beast, right down the street. They have Humphreys run right underneath. You know it's Bucks, ball, we got the hardest deep. Bring the pressure to the QB. You know it's root team, we got hard green. Welcome to Tampa, with the material. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Reppin' for my team. Go Bucks, go Bucks. You know we want the ring. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Welcome to the Bay. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Two men with Buccaneer Blade. Bucks back, we can run and toss like Evans, looking like Randy Moss. And team is make the play, after play on the defense. You can't stop Levante. I'm a boy McCoy, who you can't avoid. At the Raymond James, you about to feel the pain. If you a Bucks fan, make a lot of noise. If you a Bucks fan, make a lot of noise. Go Bucks. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to BucksReport.com with your host, Mr. Blake Cavill, a.k.a. Buccaneer Blake, on BuckingBlakeSports.com, coming out of my little small corner at Dunedin, Florida, out uh, here near the Tampa Bay area. Uh, we're just going to cover a couple things a day. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time. It's just I'm happy to be back a couple weeks off, you know, like so much stuff going on out here at BucksReport.com. But before we get into all that, make sure you show uh, love to the Bucks Report sponsors with um, <clears throat> Woodham Insurance. Take care of all your uh, insurance needs, a coast house, boat, cars, <clears throat> whatever you need. Just give them a call, Woodham Insurance. You can find most of the information right on our website, and they'll take care of you. Also, check, care of, uh, check out most of all our Bucks Report uh, writers and, and uh, podcasters. <clears throat> Um, they, they do a lot of hard work out here, spending a lot of time in their own free time along with their own work life and doing it, putting it, putting out a hundred percent, uh, for you guys to, cause you guys enjoy, you know, talking about bucks and sports and world and all that. And, you know, we try to give a hundred percent every time that we can, uh, you can find Tony on Tuesdays, uh, to Tony's take, uh, you can find the red flag podcast on Thursday. You can find Peter Blake. Exclusively on BucksReport.com, you find Peter Blake all, all every day of the week, pretty much. Uh, Peter's a little under the weather. He normally would be with, here with me today and do the uh, the Blake and Blake Sports Show, where the Buck, um, Buck and Blake Sports clashes with uh, the sports web. And um, check out uh, the UK Brit Butt Bites uh, coming out of UK, giving his flavor from across the bay. Well, across the uh, water, I shouldn't even call it bay. Pretty large body of water um and that's just pretty cool um him coming all the way over there showing his love and you know the buccaneers <clears throat> doing a lot of overseas stuff because you know how they're so connected with uh manchester united and you know they're already real familiar with overseas type stuff so uh yeah uh oh mr d wilson mr d winston welcome welcome sir uh, get you on here if you wanted to get on, man. I could spread the link to you and give your uh aspect to everything. But yes, we are. We're gonna talk Bucks football. We're gonna talk a bunch of stuff. Just uh, put whatever you want to talk about, Dean. We can talk about it. All right. So with the, uh, the preliminary process out of the way, let me get down to the nitty gritty. With 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 free agency coming up. Um, there's a there's a bunch of holes that need to be filled. Uh, they need to take care of our quarterback, uh, protecting his blind side and front side. Offensive line was pretty a let down last year, <clears throat> unable to set his feet and make some good thro- deep throws uh, that were open or waiting to get time to get down there because the offensive line was inadequate. Um, and I think it's a position that we neglected for years. Well, I gotta say neglected too bad. Uh, just something that we haven't addressed. We just let linger on for too long and just didn't adjust it uh, fast enough. And I'm saying that because there's there's a couple offensive tackles. Or one tackle I like really in particular, uh, Trent Brown. Uh, he was traded from the 49ers and traded to uh, the New England Patriots and now is a Super Bowl winner. Uh, left tackle. Uh, he's young, 26. It probably won't cost that much. You know, he might. You know, after they win the Super Bowl, they tend to ask for a lot of money. Um, but it, uh, anytime you spend money on offensive line is a well investment. I'll never complain. I would think more of the five mil, <clears throat> I mean, five year, five fifty-five million dollar range contract and give him about, 
uh, probably 25 to 30 mil guarantee. Um, especially if he can stay healthy, that's a real good investment. That sums up the left side of the offensive line. He can play either or he can play left or right. So that's a good thing. He can play swing tackle. Uh, that's really great. Um, uh, kicking is, is, is something that we need to adjust. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin Burke, uh, said, uh, I heard about bringing Matt Bryant back. <clears throat> um, you know, like I said, first and foremost, I'm a fan of the game and, you know, I'm a fan of, uh, you doing players right and stuff like that. We didn't do Matt Bryant, Matt Bryant too right. Uh, when he left here, if he comes back here, I'd be really surprised. Um, but he'll come back because, you know, it's a paycheck. So whatever, if he's got something left in the tank, I'm willing to take him for a couple of years or however he can do. Uh, if we can get our hands on Adam Vinatieri or whoever, to, you know, sum up kicking to share extra points and, you know, 40 and below field goals, I'd be happy with that. But, you know, we got rid of Bryant uh, around the time when he lost his son. Uh, yeah, I agree, Tony. We got rid of Bryant when he lost his son. Then he went on to the Atlanta Falcons and uh, ended up playing in the Super Bowl and did his thing all year long. Um, so, you know, we'll see. I mean, pretty much everything's open at this point. I don't know if they're going to uh, still ride with Santos. Santos did pretty well while he was here. Um, so we'll see. I just get tired of talking about the kicking subject every year over and over. Um, but whatever. Uh, if he takes a discount, I don't think he's going to ask for too much money, Tony. So I don't really think the money will be an issue. Um, but um, there's another tackle besides Trent Brown. I was talking about uh, Jawan James. Tw uh, he's 27 years old. Uh, he played offensive line for Miami. Took some injury last year. Uh, he should care fairly. He should come fairly a decent price. Uh, another young offensive tackle that we can put in there to plug in. I, I really want the bus to seal up offensive line in free agency and um, move on to draft other spots that we need on defense or offense or where we can get at. Cause I think in the draft, this is pretty, this draft is pretty full with defensive talent. And, um, and I think we can fill a lot of holes somewhere uh, with this draft coming up. If we still up the other needed uh, areas that we need to adjust. Uh, let me go to the waiver wire down here. Uh, Justin Burke says, he is 43 and probably doesn't have too much left. He just he, We did just sign the Danish kicker. Uh, I don't think that really hurts our pockets. I don't really so, I think we signed it too much. So we can probably move him around or he can be a camp body. I'm not really sure what all that is. <clears throat> but I'm interested to see. I'm open. I'm open to see what, um, uh, see what he brings. Uh, Tony said he's going to rate. In Atlanta for about three million. You must be talking about um, Matt Bryant. Mm. We'll see. I'm tired of just scavenging after every free agent. I think we're supposed to pick him up. Uh, we got to find. We got to find our way some way somehow, and just keep fighting. Jason Lighton, the coaching staff, just got to find talent now and just and then just make it work, man. Just make it work. Um, where was that? Free agents. <clears throat> talking about the tackles. I really want to fill our tackle spots uh, with free agents. Uh, there's really not too many guards out there um, that, 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 the, that, that I would say go after and spend money on, but the Trent Brown has it, got to get done. Trent Brown has got to get signed, give him five-year, $555 million contract, and get that offensive line sealed up. At 26, that's a lot of years you have to worry about offensive line unless injury happens. And if you can get another tackle, too, that'd be great to replace uh, Damar Dawson. Whatever you're going to do, because he's on the 32, 33 years old side. Um, you know, just pick, you just signed um, J Ryan Jensen. That's just seal you up at center. Uh, you got Ali Marpet at guard. So you have to fill another guard spot, which you, which you can put in um, Alex Kappa at that spot. Um, being how he didn't really play too much near the end, of, well, played near the end of the season um, last year. So. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully they have a great camp and he got a lot of got his feet under him, got a lot of continuity going, uh, spending time with the team uh, the whole 2018 season. Um, if we can do that, and then there's other players that we can pick up, like running back, we can pick up Jay Jai. Uh, he'll be a free agent and possibly tr um, Cameron Bray could be traded too as well. I'm not sure if um, Bruce Arians wants to deal with two tight ends this season with O.J. Howard coming in his own and Cameron Brake coming off an injury. 
and we just signed him to that long deal, you know, that long contract because it was really a dirt cutter thing. Uh, he was really interested in two tight end set and kind of worked out because when OJ Howard got hurt, then we had break to come in, so we didn't really, you know, have to worry too much about um, uh, tight end depth. So we'll see how that plays out. And plus, you don't have to really worry about contracts too much at this point because O.J. Howard is still under his rookie deal. And Cameron Braid's, you know, I think coming to his second second year in his contract, you know, around the time when Braid, when it's time for the O.J. to get paid, uh, you can cut Braid without taking a salary cap hit or trade him and get some depth somewhere out of that. So we'll see how it goes. That's where I kind of figured what was going to happen um, with that uh, Cameron Braid thing. I'm gonna go to the uh, the chat line down here and see what you guys got to say. <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, Christopher Cole, I agree. Kappa needs a shot. I agree. So we'll see how he does this offseason. It's now it's time to shine because now we know that Caleb Benenat is not the guy. <clears throat> he couldn't block guys that were laying on the ground already. Um, go ahead and trade break. We have Alan Cross. Sorry, Corey. Alan Cross retired. I don't know if you knew that. Um, Tony Rossi resigning D Smith to a huge deal <laughs> to a huge deal to me is, is problematic. That's sad if they do because <clears throat> everybody else has uh Donovan Smith's days as a starting left tackle over. He's more of a swing man to come in on certain plays or run packages and stuff like that, but to rely on him to pass block, I really don't think so. Uh, Corey Brown next season. Cornerback for Bucks, VH3, Ryan Smith, Carlton Dage, MJ Stewart, Patrick Peterson, and draft Greedy Williams and sign a senior for you. That's too many. That's just too many defensive backs. Now, I said this was before. I would like to have that many players on the defensive line because that would make a huge difference. That means you're getting a constant pass rush all the time than to have 80 corners uh, with no pass rush. That's kind of backwards to me. Um. I think with Arians, it won't be that bad. You know, greedy 6'3". Uh, it all depends on the scheme. I would rather get a, a a dominant pass rusher than another corner. It'd be one thing if we already had that a dominant pass rusher because we kind of just went from last place last year, 2017, to fairly decent this year. I want to keep adding on to that and not get, you know, uh, complacent now that we upgraded a little bit in pass rush we still need to get better because there were times we couldn't get any pressure i would like to keep going with that and building on that and then we can move on uh to filling in corners another spot we just keep filling secondary and, and then keep and then we go back to forgetting about the pass rush uh german kickers are garbage yeah i don't know nothing about them tony so i'm not gonna really get into all that light seems to like the trade picks in my opinion if the Bucks trade down from fifth and, and uh, gain capital, then in rounds two and three, they draft quality. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> like you can draft Risner out of Kansas, Kansas State, uh, left tackle. But, but I think I really think you need to pick up Trent Brown. That is like really an anchor to the offensive line. He's six eight, just a massive man. And nobody's going to be bowing him back into the quarterback with that and then run block. And he's just going to maul people. And the running backs gonna run right behind him. I, I, that's just a that's just a free agent you got to have is Trent Brown with the age, the size, the skill play, and where he just came from in New England. It, it's just that deal's just got to get done. He's got to be here. Um, yeah, he probably will trade down for five, especially with the quarterback situation, Tony. So, Light is sitting in a real prime position right now to move down to maybe ten and gain some extra picks, and then load up uh, on other spots that we need. Possibly another offensive lineman, uh, another pass rusher, a uh, hybrid player. Uh, there's a hybrid player out of Florida, uh, Gators. He can stand up and rush it. Guy's tenacious pass rush. He has a great first step. And the key part, he has long arms. That was Spence's issue. The Spence doesn't have long arms. He has short, stout arms, which it hurts him in pass rush department. He can't really gain no leverage on an offensive lineman because his arms aren't long enough, unfortunately. He has all the other intangibles. He just doesn't have the length in his arms. So, uh, you know, I, for me, for Spence to be successful, he would have to use, like, karate chop moves and keep linemen's hands off of him and dip his shoulder. Yeah, you just have to learn that technique over time. I told I mean, I – I have, I've hit him up on 
Instagram and told him uh, Brandon Graham is a guy I think he can learn a lot from because that was like a lot of Brandon Graham's issue with Philadelphia when he's drafted in the first round. He was having a lot of issues getting people's hands off of him and getting to the quarterback. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to the uh, chat line here. Uh, Trey Cameron Brake. Packers for Jimmy Graham, not going to happen because of the contract Jimmy Graham still has. Any formal Cardinal tight ends, tight end players, free agent? Uh, you would, you're probably asking me for uh, the Arians era. I'm not quite sure um, if there's anybody there that that was in the light era that was actually, I think Gresham. Gresham was the last one. I think that was there for Arians. And Gresham wasn't really all that stout. I think the tight ends we have are better than Jermaine Gresham. In my opinion, um, Brandon Spikes. He said they fixed they fixed the secondary. They good, yeah, they did. They 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 picked up um, a bunch of secondary players. If you drafted three secondary players in the draft last year, that's why I keep scratching my head when people keep saying draft another DB. You just drafted three DBs in the draft last year. Uh, I think that's kind of a uh, kind of redundant picking up uh, more defensive backs. I think we need to be adding to the pass rush, the the progress that we have um, last year and add on to it with the addition of Ryan Nassib. Just keep adding. Don't get complacent. Oh, yeah, we're good now. No, we're not good. Keep adding. As we're going to lose McCoy, then you need to keep adding then. Uh, Brandon Sprites, Jameis needs to stop throwing interceptions. I think any quarterback needs to not throw interceptions. That's kind of rough in a predominantly passing league it's kind of rough in a team that doesn't run the ball but i thought since he came back he really didn't have too many issues and uh, i think a couple of the interceptions especially that one where it hit mike evans in the chest and bounced in the air and got picked really isn't on him but <clears throat> otherwise they took really good care of the ball uh, if he can keep that up he'll be fine and then you can support him with a run game uh lighten the burden off of him something he ain't had since that one year Doug Martin went off and funny 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 we won 97 that season uh so D Winston says Tampa Tampa Bay needs to stop having to throw the ball 50 60 times yep I'm, I agree D it was the same thing what I was just saying a minute ago I think um when uh Jameis plays his best when he has a run support uh well I'm not gonna say just Jameis any quarterback just shit just Excuse me. Just ask uh, Jared Goff <clears throat> uh, what the importance of Todd Gurley was. Uh, Given twenty carries to Todd Gurley, he's getting hundred yards, two rushing touchdowns, and you add C.J. Anderson with another seventy-five yards, first down carries. It's a, it's a whole lot of load uh, taken off of your shoulders um, when you have a run game to support, and, and and the defensive line doesn't have to worry about. Well, the defensive line has to worry about protecting against the run, and they're just pinning their ears back past rushing against uh, especially your left tackle who really isn't good at pass blocking. So we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a lot last year, and Jameis had to force a lot of things. You can't set your feet because the line's falling in your lap because your right tackle's not very good. Um, and, you know, you know, and it's bad. You know, I just don't like to sit up here and bash people. I'm just calling it, you know, a spade a spade, you know, man. Uh, there's at times it was really bad, and you can't, you can't set his feet to throw. And then that's it helps make the ball accurate as everybody keeps complaining that he can't hit Deshaun Jackson deep, especially on a deep ball. You're throwing 50 yards downfield. You kind of need your legs to put the ball behind that. And he kind of had to throw it with his upper torso. <clears throat> a lot of those passes because there's you can't set your feet and throw, man. No, that's just just common mechanics. If you know anything about throwing the ball or anything, it doesn't even have to be football. It's just common mechanics. Kind of need the, your follow through to throw an accurate pass, and you can't do that with that. Um, I'm gonna go to the waiver wire. Winston throwing interception because offensive line not that good at all. Winston don't have time to throw the football without getting without getting sacked and turnover. <clears throat> oh yeah, I, and I think people just like to beat up on Winston. Period, because they can. You know, especially that Dallas game. They, Troy Aikman talking about, oh, he's got to know he's behind him. Well, how he would know, he rolled all the way to the right-hand side and was the left defensive end, right defensive right, but our left defensive end came all the way around and strip-sacked him. 
They couldn't hold. They couldn't hold protection. Well, Donovan Smith didn't block in the entire the entire play and just gave him a look out block. He let the dude go by him and turned around and said, "Look out!" I mean, and it was sad. There's a receiver running wide open. I'm not sure it was Deshaun Jackson or uh, uh, Deshaun Jackson or Humphreys or somebody was wide open. He just couldn't get that ball there, unfortunately, because of protection. Um, uh, Jay, <laughs> Jake Buckley said, unless you're Mahomes, hey, hope Mahomes can keep it going. One year doesn't make you a legend. I'll tell you that. I've seen one year wonders all the time when people got tape on you. The day the game trying to change a little bit. So I'm interested to see how it turns out. I said, Brandon Spikes, is this Brandon Spikes used to play with the Patriots and play a Florida Gator? So is that you? Um, Brandon Spike says we need a good running back like two. I definitely definitely need a good running back uh, one or two. You need somebody, uh, not just that, Brandon. You need somebody that's uh, dynamic, Um, almost like a joker player, a dynamic player. You line up in the back or field. You can line up a wide receiver. You're just trying to find Mitch matches, and you uh, get the ball in space and make a defender miss. That's really all you need. You need somebody that can make somebody miss an open field and get a first down. We don't have a whole lot of that. You know, Adam Humphreys is great, and he kind of fits that little joker player, you know, that that, that that athletic guy. But he doesn't have really too good of moves in open field, you know, and to make a guy just whiff. Um, no, just a one to Brandon. I always like that name, Brandon Spikes. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the best linebacker name ever. Uh, I don't have a doubt in my mind, Buckley, that they re-sign Humphreys back. There's not a doubt in my mind. Um the question is, Core, if they move Donovan Smith, uh, well, let me rephrase that. The question is, does Donovan Smith want to move? Does he believe he's a tackle? He doesn't have the feet to move. I think he should go under Jason Peters' wing and learn how a big offensive lineman can move the way he do and hold his ground. And he just doesn't have that. <clears throat> I'll just give you a better example. Uh, Noah Smith's college highlight tape, uh, Donovan Smith is on there. You know, he's beating up Donovan Smith, so <sighs> – I mean, it is what it is, man. Uh, bring back Quan. I don't have a doubt. I sure he's going to get a contract like Levante. Get even got pretty decent contract. Wasn't ridiculous. So I, I think Quan will get a nice, decent contract. I don't think they're going to uh, screw him over because of the injury. Uh, what running back do you think we should go after in free agent or the draft? Um, uh, actually, I can't, I can't think of his name at the top of my head. Uh, he's the chief. He was the Chiefs' uh, backup running back. He's a great pass catcher and a great running back. He's a really good running back. They just, uh, you know, injuries uh, through his career. Could people kind of forget about him? And then when he gets a chance to play, he shows how good he's getting. I can't remember the, the guy that just replaced Kareem Hunt. If somebody could help me, uh, he's a really good running back, a very dynamic running back. Uh, I would even say Tavon Austin line him up in backfield some play to catch passes and. Uh, come out and stuff like that. We just need to get more dynamic on offense, much like the Panthers did. Uh, you got a lot of players, like they got Curtis Samuel, that could play multiple spots and stuff like that and create Mitch match opportunities. Uh, I think we need to get more like that with the times and start trying to play just conventional football. Um, you know, help Jameis out, give him different looks. Um, no, not, Ch- not Chandrick West. I can't think of his name. Um, it, it'll come to me, or if one of you guys say it, I'll remember it. He used to play for the Cowboys a couple years ago, too, in his younger days. Um, JPP more fan favorite now over Gerald McCoy, Corey says. Uh, I would I would say they play two different positions. Um, de- defensive tackle really isn't a glorified position. Your job is to eat up blocks and create havoc on the inside defensive ends. Usually have one on ones unless you're using the back of chip or using the tight end to slow down the rush and then release. Um, but Jason Pierre Paul has done what Jason Pierre Paul does. He's he's a great long long guy and he's gonna make plays in the run in um, pass rushing department. Um, but I think Tampa fans gra- gravitate towards anybody with success. So I would agree. Yeah, right now Jason Pierre Paul is a, you know more of a favorite than Gerald McCoy. I would agree. Um, Corey says Reed Buck should target. <clears throat> Only reason I don't like Reed, he's an old style safety. Uh, he likes to lead with his head and create a lot of penalties. Uh, 
That's the only reason I wouldn't really like reading. This is really a coverage game. You have a better chance at moving a safety to a corner to safety in this league to cover and with good run support, which is more like why the Bucks got MJ Stewart down in the box player and could cover underneath routes and stuff, which we didn't use him a whole lot for. But uh, that's what he was really good at at University of North Carolina and coming up in the run support and stuff like that. Uh, with the injury to Vernon Hargrave, has kind of set back the plan in the secondary, and that's why a kind of things look shuffled, shuffled, and a lot of guys look like they were out of place. So, you know, injuries kind of plagued us from week one on, and Hargrave's had a solid offseason, was playing very well in the first game against the Saints. Sadly, injury uh, set him aside. Uh, that's cool, Corey. Uh, what position do you play? Uh, I had a buddy. Uh, David Turner, he played quarterback for uh, Minnesota as well. It's a couple years ago, but he played quarterback for them. Um, and I believe uh, P.J. Fleck is there as well at Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken, ex Bucks wide receiver coach. Uh, really good man moving up the ranks in the coaching really fast because his energetic personality. Um, uh, there's, there's some uh, – if, if, if we're going to pick at five, there's some players that are impactful that we got to take immediately. And then one of some of them got to be Ed Oliver. Uh, I think that's, uh, I think that's um, Aaron Donald Jr. Uh, Quentin Williams, Greedy Williams, Clinton Farrell. And then I think you can get in the second round or possibly third, depending on where he falls. I think somebody's going to snag him up. Uh, Marquise Brown. Uh, if you want to get rid of Sean Jackson, maybe get a mid-round pick and then pick up Marquise Brown to replace Jackson. The boy's got speed, much like Deshaun Jackson, real small receiver with speed, real good speed. But I think Marquise Brown has better hands than uh, Deshaun Jackson. Um, I wanted to say, too, Ronald Darby is coming off injury last year, so I think he might team up with Jameis Winston if you really need another corner. And you think you can get him at a fairly decent price uh, coming out of from free agent out of Philadelphia, Ronald Darby, because him and Winston were roommates in college. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. And and if we let Gerald walk, you also got uh, Grady Jarrett at age 26 years old uh, coming from the Falcons. Not sure what their cap situation is looking at with Matt Ryan getting all that money. Um, we can come in there and fill that defensive tackle spot. Grady Jarrett is a, a handful in there. Um, let me check out the chat line down here. See what you guys got. You know, I don't. I wouldn't say McCoy sucks. I wouldn't say that at all. He's played with no help his entire career. Uh, I think I pointed out. <laughs> I figured somebody was going to say that Mike Yater. Um, what was I saying? Um. Gerald McCoy has never had help his entire career until this season. <clears throat> and I do believe, think he's lost a step. I don't know if he was hurt all season or what the case may be. Um, but he's really never had anybody to play with his entire career. Like, if you talk about Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald broke the sack record, but look at the defensive line he had. I mean, look, he's had nothing but talent his entire career. I'm not taking nothing away from Aaron Donald. I've liked him since he was at Pittsburgh. People told me I was crazy. Uh, because he played at Pittsburgh, some people didn't think he was going to be good, but he has five first-round picks, uh, top picks on his defensive line currently this year with Sue next to him. And then you're talking about, yeah, Chris Long one year. You had, um, boy, Robert Quinn, and then you had Michael Brockers, and then you got Dante Fowler. And it was like that his whole career. Even J.J. Watt, at one point, they ran a 3-4. He had seven first-round picks in the, in the box. Um, you know, uh, they said some of these guys have had nothing but talent around them their entire career. And here we are at Tampa Bay, of low relying on one defensive tackle to make plays. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I get what you guys, you want to see production and stuff like that, but you got to look at things for what it is. I mean, for having no help his entire career, there's only four defensive tackles active right now that have the amount of sacks that he has or has more than him. And one of them, well, two of them, one is Aaron Donald, and the other is um, the boy out of the Bengals. I forget his name. His name slips my mind. Defensive tackle for the Bengals. 
And I'm just saying, you just got to look at it for that. I, I I get all the fourth quarter thing. I get all that. But like I said, there's no there's no other help coming from anywhere else his entire career. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, and the guy is great in his community, and I, I don't think he deserves the beating that he's getting. The same thing with Jameis Winston. I've never seen somebody who constantly tries to win and tries to do and tries to do whatever he can. He can throw things more than what he should do um, to try to win uh, games and, and not just come here to take money, which a lot of these guys will be picking up out of free agency is what they've been doing is just coming here collecting checks season after season. Um, so when you got people here that actually want to be here, I think we need to treat them a little bit better than guys who don't care about being here and just care about getting paid. Um, let me get to you guys as comments down here. <clears throat> Terrence Dotson and McCoy has never had a secondary that could make a QB go the ball for a split second longer. I mean, even, even that Terrence, like I said, that's just, it's not just Gerald McCoy's job to get the sack, even if the quarterback does hold on to the ball. There's three or four other guys that have the same responsibility as he does. You know, I'm not even going to talk about the double team. I'm just going to say there's there was nobody else like Daniel, Daniel Tianessa. And the one player that you that could get to the quarterback, we let walk in free agency for Gaines Adams. I mean, not Gaines Adams, um, Daquan Bowers. We let um, Michael Bennett go. I mean, the, the, it's, it's, dude's been screwed since he's been here. So, I mean, it's, it's whatever. Uh, Corey says, do Bucks win in London versus Panthers? I think we need, we're need due for a win in London since we haven't won one yet, so I'm looking forward to it. Trade to Sean for Patrick Peterson and draft picks. Bucks need. Well, question is, does Arizona want Deshaun Jackson? I think Deshaun talking about he wants to go to L.A. You know, he's from Cali. Josh Norman trade target too old, too old. You might as well bring Grimes back in this case. Grimes didn't play bad, nor Grimes did. Like I'm not gonna get into that whole thing. You have to listen to the whole interview and not just get sucked into uh, clickbait that you see on articles where he says he wasn't getting paid enough. Listen to the whole uh, interview and, and then make your judgment because he said he wanted to play for this team. His wife told him to bail out. And he says, no, I believe this team can turn around, but they don't mention that nowhere in none of the, in the articles that they write. It's hard to say as much as I like Noah Spence, Corey. Hard to say. Really hard to say. It's, it's The luck is just not on his side right now. It's really not. Um, that's my defense for him. I'm trying to read down some of you guys' comments. Winston has, has a true QB coach that can help him with his mechanics. I don't think he really has any bad mechanics. I think he played really well when he, um, you know, focused more and, and just did what he could do and not try to do any more than that. I think he did really well with just doing his part and let everybody else do theirs. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you're right. I was just saying that earlier. Losing Vernon Hargraves had to change the whole scrape of the defense. He was going to play the nickel corner and was excelling at it. And then him going down week one had to change anything. Um, oh, Alexander, I'm talking about the uh, the Grimes article. We're talking about right, where everybody kept saying, well, Grimes was saying he wasn't getting paid enough. You got you to listen to the whole interview. Grimes was about this team. Grimes wanted to be here. Um, he did not want to leave. Uh, Grimes did play bad. I, you couldn't name five plays where Grimes got beat bad. I mean, you, and even if you did, that's in 16 games. He didn't really get beat too bad uh, all season compared to some other people. Um, like I said, in the totality of it, like I said, you gotta listen to the, you gotta listen to the whole interview and not just go off of uh off of that one line where he said wasn't getting paid enough, and yeah, listen to the reason why he said he wasn't getting paid enough, <clears throat> which is uh, who am I going to tell somebody what they're worth? And just like you, you go into a job and you expect to get paid a certain amount, and they try to underpay you and make you get paid to do more work. <clears throat> it's the same thing. You, you know as well as I do, 
this league is is not about playing to have fun. It's about getting paid. Um, his accuracy have to prove. If you're just talking about deep balls, I was talking about that earlier. Um, you know, a lot of it, you know, we had protection, can't step into the throws. And there are times where he just missed them. They just were not on the same page. He's not where somebody should be, where he thought he should be. Like I said, I don't know what the play calls or what each one was the real, what read was what. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of he should hear saying a lot with that. Mm. Where does Taylor fit and fit in once Beckwith comes back, back in rotation at linebacker, <clears throat> coming in, somebody hurts and get a spell. Grimes is a number two corner, can't tackle or go for block. At all, single hardly helped Pittsburgh in the Monday night game. Yeah, that's Antonio Brown, though. And it's just a good play call. Not too many corners can make a tackle in open field with that much room. Antonio Brown. So, I mean, I don't think if Carlton Davis was there, any the result would have been any different. Um, Oh, Chris Conte. I don't even want to talk about him. Mm, trying to get through another good one before I get out of here. I got something good for me. Bucks need a new punter. Mm -hmm. I think he's fine since he was the punter that was picked before Russell Wilson. Thank you, Jacksonville. (laughs) Um, If you guys ain't got nothing else good for me, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I think I got to know free agents, draft picks. Got to be, got to get that offensive tackle, man. Got to get it. Uh, got to get that tackle and secure that offensive line and, and start solidifying a run game here. And I think the Bucks should go after Marquise Brown if you plan on moving on from Deshaun Jackson. So I don't think Aaron's really is wants to keep him. I think um, <clears throat> I think it's all smoke too. I think Tony said that as well. I think it's smoke just to appease the people. Uh, article uh, article getter, clickbait. Oh, Gary, why aren't we going after the honey badger? <clears throat> you have to say, I don't think you said that question correctly. Is the honey badger going to come for us? Is that they're a free agent? It's their choice if they want to come here or not. I mean, I think the first thing is first, people don't want to play for somewhere where it's a hot mess, where you don't know who your coach is going to be year in, year out. Uh, you got a lot of drama on the team. People don't want to come to that. You'd rather go to a team that's winning, and you can just do your part and get out of there and get a ring. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think Arians and them bring a lot of continuity and consistency. That should be the word instead of rec- wreak havoc and all that. It needs to be consistent consistency. Um, I think – where was I at? I was trying to thought. I was reading some of the comments. Yeah, so I mean, if the honey badger comes here, it'd be nice <clears throat> using the play man coverage on tight ends and stuff like that, and come down in the box and make plays. But you know, it's kind of why we drafted some other players. But uh, you know, Andrew Adams and Justin Evans and and um, uh, Jordan Whitehead, I think they all played very well last season. Injuries and everything. So I mean, uh, we'll see. Like I said, I, I think we need to focus on securing our offense and defensive line before we need to keep picking up secondary players. Corey Winston hasn't gotten trouble in years. Uh, his his issue was years longer than a Kareem Hunt issue. Kareem Hunt's issue happened last February, and he's getting suspended now. Winston's was like three, four years ago now. So, I mean, like, <clears throat> so you're saying stay out of trouble in the offseason. This man's got a kid. He's got a wife. He's, he's not worried about that nonsense. Um, Dirt gone. Oh, you got Bucks at eleven five, Saints ten and six, Falcons seven and nine, Panthers six and ten. We'll see. Injury has a whole lot to do with it. Uh, Alexander, what is McCoy's true value with the contract? Possibly a third round pick, and that's just not on talent. It's the cost thirteen million dollars. You're not going to get a first round pick unless it's Aaron Donald. So, and and in that case, you wouldn't be trying to move him. Period. Anyway. 
I would rather them move him and try to get um, <clears throat> Jalen Ramsey. We were only talking about sealing up a corner spot. With them, we can draft the D tackle. Like I said, in free agency, we got to get offensive linemen. The, yeah, you got to secure it. That Trent Brown has got to be the guy. Five years, $55 million. Um, and Gary Cudmore. Oh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. I tried to get my thing. <clears throat> I know I'm kind of dry today. I worked. I uh, went to the gym, kind of tired. Uh, everybody knows me. I work 12 hours overnight. We get home at 6 a.m. So I wanted to make sure I got on here. I wasn't around for or for a couple of weeks. We had a bunch of stuff going on with Bucks report. So I get in where I fit in. Um, I appreciate you guys always checking me out and checking the Bucks report out. Make sure to check out people all, all week long. I think I'm going to pull out some tape next week and Peter will be back. Peter was kind of under the weather. <clears throat> so I'm kind of glad he didn't come on. I was going to try to punk him to come on. And I'm glad he didn't. I'm he's getting better, staying getting better, staying healthy. Because I know he talks a lot, Peter Blake. Um, we're still going to be missing some death unless we get free agent or trades. Uh, what position are you talking about, Alexander? <clears throat> you talking about D line? Or are you talking about offensive line? Um. But yeah, I uh, appreciate all you guys checking me out and everything. And uh, I bring a little more fire next time. <clears throat> Voice kind of raspy. I need to get some rest in. Um, like I said, we appreciate everything you guys do for Bucks Report, Buck and Blake Sports. Check me out on my website. Kind of redid everything, so check it out: www.buckandblakesports.com. Check uh, check out everybody else out at www.bucksreport.com on Facebook and everything. And uh, continue to be great continuing to show the Bucks love and, and and support us and bring positivity to this team and not a whole lot of negativity that we had last year with the whole quarterback controversy thing. Uh, it was kind of ridiculous. <clears throat> but I appreciate everything you guys do. And we end this as we always do. You have the master of everything. What you do with your life, what you do with it is entirely up to you. Thank you guys. God bless and fire those cannons. <laughs>